The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Welcome to The Life You Want is Yours. This is Johanna Kern. Our show is dedicated to living, loving, and having the most happy, healthy, successful, and abundant life. And during our shows, we are giving you effective tools to help you to live such life. Building it doesn't have to be hard or difficult at all. Patrick Kern, my husband, accompanies me in this show. Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing great. We are meeting on air every week at the same time. Let's have a brief recap of our previous shows. Johanna told us that In this show, we don't disregard anybody's preferences or beliefs. We only show you various angles and help you to expand your consciousness. This show is meant for everybody, no matter what is your background, age, gender, belief system, or lack of it. It is important to us that you will understand that. Whether you lean towards scientific theories or philosophical beliefs, the most important thing to remember is this. Life is a journey. Its distance is measured by the beauty of your heart, not by the length of it, not even by how successful you become in it. Your purpose is to constantly evolve and experience yourself. Only we can decide which route we want to choose, what we want to experience on our journey, where we want to arrive, and in whose company. Remember, you are worth living the most wonderful life. We don't need to be stuck in a stream of circumstances and perpetuate what's no longer satisfying. Contrary to some beliefs, our destiny is not a fixed thing. It doesn't take hard work or struggle to change what we want. We also learned how we create our reality with our thoughts. From Einstein, Tesla, and other scientists such as Peter Higgs and Francois Englert, who received the Nobel Prize in 2013, we know that everything that exists is simply energy. That includes all that is material, measurable by our senses, and all that we can only perceive, our thoughts, emotions, or electrons. Did you know that nobody ever has seen or weighed an electron? Everything being a part of one huge energy field vibrates, including our thoughts. They behave like radio waves, just like with radio waves, the frequency of vibrations of our thoughts determines their quality and outreach. And just like with radio waves, our thoughts are being sent out to reach, well, whatever they can reach. And what they can reach depends on the frequency of their vibrations. And that decides how our thinking affects the reality, or rather the illusion, that we create and co-create, whether we are aware of it or not. According to recent developments in science, the structure of the universe with all its laws and forces implies that intelligence existed prior to matter. And only because people identify with their body, they believe that when their body perishes, their consciousness will too. Consciousness is what it is. A vibration, a current, a signal. Not long ago, 
the medical field talked about consciousness as being related to our senses. There is even an existing term we use when someone faints. We say then that the person is unconscious. However, now, as we can see, we need to make a difference between the consciousness of our senses and the consciousness that we are, beyond our senses, not being limited to our body. And that is the consciousness we talk about during our shows. We also compare the latest discoveries in science with what some of the many philosophical or religious beliefs have been saying about infinity. While science talks about everything being a part of one huge energy field, many belief systems talk about God being all there is and containing everything within. No matter whether it is science or a belief system, that resonates the most with our own inner truth. Some things remain the same. We are all part of one whole and we are all connected. And you know what? It might be that what resonates with you is the scientific approach or it might be that you are more drawn to a spiritual or religious belief. It is important to remember that there is no right or wrong answer. There is no better or worse approach. All that you believe or think about what's true to you is valid, real and most important for you. Our show is dedicated to living, loving and having the happiest, healthy, successful and abundant life. It is easy to get used to any situation we are in, and it is more difficult to welcome change and step into uncertain ground. Yet, it can be done. As a matter of fact, it has been done by many others that you might admire and even envy their successful and happy lives. And Johanna told us that when we get used to a situation that doesn't benefit us anymore, but we have learned how to operate and survive under the circumstances, such situation becomes our habitual safety. It means that we would rather deal with something that is familiar than try anything new. Because new is scary. Many of us have the subconscious fear of the unknown. Notice and accept the fact that our life consists of a stream of changes, with or without our consent. No matter what you do or not do, life always brings you changes anyway. And that is actually the only constant thing in life. Change is a constant thing in life. Yes, nothing is ever for sure in life, but you already know that, don't you? Next, look at your own situation. Why do you think you have gotten used to the way it is? Realize that your fear of change and uncertainty is stopping you from fully and happily experiencing your life. Fear of change and uncertainty equals fear of life. Fear of life equals wasting opportunities. Wasting opportunities equals wasting your potential. Wasting your potential equals lack of happiness. Lack of happiness equals lack of joy of life. Lack of joy of life equals lack of fulfillment and success. Now do the math. It's easy. Life minus fear of change and uncertainty equals happiness, fulfillment and success. I usually say 
If it has been done, it means you can do it too. We also gave you the next step in the game, Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life, a game that can help you change any life situation and achieve anything you want. We will give you the next step in that game later in the show, but now let's talk about our next topic, negativity and negative people. I wrote about this topic before, on my blog, on my official site, www.johannakern.com. And today, we will talk in more details about how to deal with one's own negative thoughts, as well as with negative people in our life. Often, they might be our relatives or friends. And we cannot simply walk away from them for various reasons. In the meantime, their negativity and our own negativity may often stop us from living the life we want. Later on, during today's show, I will also answer some of the questions you sent me, those that are related to our today's topic. Thank you for sending me the emails. You will, of course, remain anonymous. And those of you who would like to send me your questions can email me at radio at johannakern.com. After the break, let's talk about how to deal with negative people and our own negativity. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. It has been scientifically proven that happy people are healthier, both physically and emotionally, live longer and have much more fulfilling lives than the grumpy, complaining and therefore unhappy among us. According to psychologists and researchers, Happy people tend to challenge themselves, and so they accomplish much more. The simple secret behind this is that working toward an accomplishment gives us a feeling of fulfilling a life purpose and makes us feel good. When happiness leaks out from our life due to daily struggle, stress, worries, and busyness of life, we stop being conscious, and we miss out not only on the beauty and importance of our existence, but also on the gifts that life offers us in abundance. Happiness helps us generate new ideas, go beyond specific information, think outside the box, and come up with more creative solutions. It is the door opening to better understanding of the mechanisms of life, expanding our consciousness and reaching far beyond our limitations. Yes, we don't need to follow the steps of those who imprinted in our subconscious any form of bitterness and disappointment with life, which then we started to project on our own life situation. We need to remember that life is what it is, a constant change allowing us to fully experience ourselves. An opportunity to grow, to find out who we are, what is important to us, and how we want to live our life. Let us not forget that life is not our enemy. We can have the most wonderful, valuable, successful, and fulfilled life when we decide to do so. We are powerful creators. Our thoughts become reality, as we know well from quantum physics. Let us remind ourselves that according to science and the ancient masters, we are the ones who create the reality, or more precisely, the illusion which our minds interpret via our senses given us the illusion of reality. I talked about it in details in the first show from our series, The Life You Want Is Yours, 
And if you missed it, you can find it in the archives on my official site www.johannakern.com. Go to the tab Listen, Watch and find our radio show archives. The good news is that happiness can be learned. Yes, we can rewire our brains for happiness and positive thinking. We can become happier, more effective and enjoying and creating the life we want and deserve. You can train your brain to be addicted to joy and happiness. It's easy. There is an interesting characteristic to the human brain. It easily gets used to particular types of chemicals being released while we are experiencing certain types of emotions. The brain then gets hooked on those chemicals and wants to feed on them again and again. And so the brain creates neural paths for the chemicals it is used to. You can imagine the neural paths as paths leading through a lung. The more often we use such paths, the deeper and wider they are. Similarly, the more often we think certain thoughts and feel emotions related to them, the stronger the neural paths in our brain become, while those we don't use wither away. Always hungry for more, our brain uses our subconscious to create circumstances in our life in which we will produce more of the chemicals it craves. Our brain does not care whether we are happy with those circumstances or not. It just wants to get its feed. It is not our brain, but our consciousness that decides whether we are happy or not. Our brain is merely its tool, and it can be trained in any way we want. The ancient cultures knew that and created a whole system of symbols to affect, inspire, and create the reality for themselves, usually via the pineal gland, and effectively using the power of the subconscious mind. I will talk more about that in our future shows. I actually designed a step-by-step -step program for reprogramming our subconscious and will be giving you some tips during our shows as we go and while answering your questions. A very important to know is that while we are changing our negative thought pattern, we need to reprogram our subconscious thinking as well. As you may already know, our subconscious has often much greater power over us than our conscious thoughts, and that's because it is often packed with all of our fears and the negative programming we acquired in our childhood. We might have stored in it all the criticism from our parents, caregivers, teachers, or society. And that's why now we may believe that we are not worth living a good life, and that we need to be miserable, depressed, tired, overwhelmed, and not worthy having our dreams fulfilled. Remember, we are all worthy of living the life we want. It is our birthright to be happy, healthy, successful, and loved. It is our birthright to have the most magnificent life. And we just need to learn how to claim it. And by claiming it, we execute our basic rights to be cherished by the world, to be appreciated by those around us, and by ourselves. When we learn to appreciate ourselves, we know how to live beautifully and to appreciate others. And now I would like you to relax and repeat after me in your mind a very useful affirmation. It is important to repeat such statements in order to rewire our brain for positive thinking and to affect our subconscious. One of the most important things in changing our thinking to be more positive is repetition. Another one is an appropriate environment 
to use such affirmations so that our subconscious would accept the message. And our shows provide such environment for our subconscious. The affirmation which we are repeating with you every week comes from my book 365 plus 1, Affirmations to Create a Great Life, and goes as follows. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me if I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Very well done. We will repeat this affirmation again at the end of the show during our usual routine, a short relaxation in which I am guiding you to help you in the process of reprogramming your subconscious. And during our shows, I will be giving you more and more useful tips, helping you to build and live the life you want. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be hard. And if someone before, a human being, just like you and me, has done it, you certainly can do it too. Why? Because you are a powerful, magnificent being and you deserve and will have all that you want and what's best for you. Whoever taught you to think differently of yourself was wrong. Do not believe them anymore. You can take your destiny in your own hands. Don't let your life slip through your fingers. It is too precious. You are precious. Accept it. Feel it and know it. Take one day at a time. Relax and enjoy the moment. You do deserve the best and you will get where you want to be. After all, look how far you have already come. You are the best thing that can ever happen to you. Please remember that. The only thing that stays in the way between you and the life you want is your subconscious programming, including your subconscious fears. And I will talk in more details about the top 10 fears in our life during our next shows. Today, we will talk more about the negativity that put a spell on you and your life. But once you know how to deal with it, you'll change things that you need to change and you will build or get the things you want. The life you want is yours when you know how to claim it. Let's do that. It is your turn to live the most wonderful life and have what you want. The life you want is yours with Johanna Kern. Time for questions and answers. And, as I said before, your identity will not be revealed. If you would like me to answer your question on air, please know that you can safely send me an email to this address, radio at johannakern.com. And here is the first question. We received it from Martha who wrote, Dear Johanna, I'd like to apologize for writing to you since I know how busy you must be and if you don't answer my question I will understand. I only write to tell you how much I admire your courage and ability to live the life you want. I have tried to be positive in my life and read many books and went to many seminars and workshops that were out there 
but nothing really worked for me. I want to stay positive and improve my situation, but I still can't manage that, no matter what I've tried. I'm worried that as years go by and I don't get any younger, it will be too late for me and that I wasted my life. I am still stuck at the same point, not knowing what I have done wrong. If you find the time in your busy schedule, please answer me. I wish you all the best. Disappointed with life, but still hopeful. Sincerely yours, Martha. Oh, dear Martha, I am here to help you. And that goes for all of you. That's why I decided to do the show. Let's start from the beginning. Martha, what you are talking about is not that uncommon at all. Many people who have tried some self-help seminars or read self-help books have been disappointed with them. It is very important to understand, and I can't stress that enough, that while we are consciously, intellectually working on changing our thought pattern, our subconscious may not accept at all what we are trying to tell ourselves. And that's why reading books and learning the idea of positive thinking on its own is not enough. A very skillful instructor might tell you that. And I am sorry that in your case it didn't happen that way. I don't think you have wasted your time or your life, since everything we go through, every single experience, is important for our development and for gaining life wisdom. Now, how can we remedy your problem? You already know that your negativity creates more and attracts more negativity in your life. Your focus on what you describe as your disappointment does so too. I always say that what we're focusing on grows. It is easy to imagine it this way. When you water and care for a plant, It flourishes and blooms. If you neglect it, it will wither away. The same goes for anything else. So in your situation, it would be better to realize that even though you have not yet found a good solution, it does not mean that it doesn't exist. It is better to think, there might be a better, more appropriate way for me, and I will find it if I put my attention to it. We tend to quickly assess people or circumstances based on our previous experiences, but such judgments may be utterly wrong. I assure you that you too can change your life and that your positive thinking will work if your subconscious will not get in your way. Now the real question here is, how to think positively without our negatively programmed subconscious overriding our positive thoughts? And that's the question you might ask, Martha. And that is something I can indeed explain to you. When we are used to negative thinking, we need to remember that when we affirm something that is in contrast to what we subconsciously think of ourselves, Our subconscious will reject anything that it perceives as nonsense. It will, for instance, reject an affirmation such as I have million dollars in my bank account when we don't have enough money to pay our bills. The thing is that what we affirm must be in line with our vision of ourselves and our vision of the world. That's why positive statements such as, I am healthy when we are ill, or I am rich when we barely can pay our bills, are ineffective. When we practice positive statements, such as affirmations, for example, we need to practice them step by step. We should begin from changing our beliefs about ourselves. It is good to first recognize that we are really worthy of having a better life, that we deserve a better fate. We need to realize that every human being on this planet, each plant and each animal, every single living creature 
is absolutely unique. It is important to realize and acknowledge our own uniqueness and the fact that we can decide about our own life and contribute to the lives of others and slowly start changing our thinking and affirming, saying, for example, I know that life can bring me all that is good. I am ready for better and better days. It is very important to remember that when we are experiencing any hard, painful, or dramatic situation, we shouldn't try to convince ourselves that everything is peachy and rosy and perfect, as our subconscious will laugh at it and reject such thinking. But you can say what is true, in a way that will be helpful in your situation. For instance, when you are ill, you may say, there are moments when I feel good and I am awaiting more of such moments. And then after that, I feel better and better. I believe I will recover. And then the next statement, I am happy to see my gradual recovery. The same with success. You can't start by repeating right away, I am successful, when your subconscious knows otherwise. It will reject such a thought immediately. You'd better start from a statement like this. I can acquire more and more useful skills. I believe I can find my dream job and be appreciated. And so on. Of course, we cannot just repeat such statements and do nothing about our situation. You should indeed work on acquiring more skills and together with professional development, continue developing your positive thinking. Practicing positive thinking causes a gradual transformation of our internal beliefs, replacing our subconscious negative programming with one that is positive and beneficial for us. When we think new positive thoughts, we begin to produce different chemical substances and new neural pathways in our brain are being created. Just as we start creating a new shortcut through a lawn using a new, more comfortable path, the more we use this new path, the more often we repeat positive thoughts, the stronger the new neural pathways become. For such a process to be effective, we need approximately six weeks of constant repetition. That is exactly the time needed for new neural pathways to be created and the old ones to disappear. But to fully change our lifestyle and completely free ourselves from negative thinking, we need at least six months to let the new neural pathways to become permanent. In my book 365 plus 1, Affirmations to Create a Great Life, I tell my readers how to do it and provide them with an easy step-by-step -step program to improve any life situation. I also recorded some CDs that one can listen to in a state of deep relaxation. While I am guiding the listeners through the process of reprogramming one's subconscious. These or similar tools are very effective and you can find on the market what will suit your preferences and the needs. Remember also that affirming should be done thoroughly. If we affirm for a minute in the morning and then we have negative thoughts all day long, it's obvious that the volume of these thoughts will override the few positive ones. Some believe that affirmations should be repeated over and over again. It is not necessary. It is best to use affirmations at an appropriate moment. For example, if we affirm a money inflow, it is not good to do it when we have no money at all. Best to wait for a moment 
when we are buying something we have desired, even if it is something inexpensive. It is good to say then in our thoughts, I am happy that I have more than I need to buy what I want, when we are getting some change. It is an excellent time to affirm money inflow, since our subconscious will agree with what we are saying. We should always use such opportunities. Another important thing is to try invoking some positive feelings while affirming. An affirmation works best when our brain and our subconscious associated with positive emotions such as pleasure, relaxation or satisfaction. When we don't feel well, we shouldn't try to affirm anything positive. Instead, it is best to release the negative emotions and allow ourselves to be sad, to cry. It is pointless to say everything is great when we are sad. It is better to say in such moments, I choose to feel better and better. The statement I choose is a very powerful affirmation in itself. When we choose something and keep repeating our intention, it will gradually happen. At a certain point, new neural pathways will be created. Remember that our affirmations work not only when we invoke positive emotions, but also when we feel pleasure. Beautiful landscapes, scents, a walk in the park or in the woods, along a seashore, views of the mountains, etc. All of that is really helpful. What is interesting is that nature strengthens our positive thinking to a great extent because our brain associates landscapes and nature with the so-called alpha brain waves, which are found to be very helpful in effective learning. I hope that will help you, Martha, to understand how you can effectively change the way you think. Positive thinking, as any other thinking, is simply a result of our practice. First, we need to become conscious of how and when to think positively. Then it becomes our habit, and later our habit becomes our lifestyle. I wish you best of luck on your journey to the life you want. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. We have just enough time for one more question. The second question is from Andrew. I am married with kids and my wife is absolutely wonderful, but her mother can easily ruin any holidays or family gatherings with her criticism and negativity. Some people have told us that we need to avoid her and not let her visit our house because after she leaves we are really exhausted and we keep arguing about everything and yelling at our kids. Her negativity affects our relationship, our family, and we don't know what to do about it. It is my wife's mother, and we can't simply cast her out. What do you think we should do? Yes, negative people can easily drain your energy and spoil your joy of life. Many of us have experienced such negativity as Andrew describes, coming from our own relatives, perhaps parents or siblings or a father or mother-in-law. And indeed, we might be stuck in situations when their negativity deeply affects our life. There is always something we can do, and we don't need to simply suffer the consequences. Let me give you some tips how you can deal with negative people in your life. When you first converse with them, provide a listening ear and let them know they are not alone. But draw a line somewhere. Switch topics. Don't engage in their negativity. Nod or give simple replies such as mm or I see. Each time they say something positive, reply enthusiastically. 
and if you do it often, they will soon be more positive in their communication. Whenever they criticize anything or anybody, remember that they probably mean no harm, but they are simply caught in their negativity. Don't let it get to you. Simply take it as their point of view and respond by nodding or giving them simple replies such as, I see. When they dwell on topics that trigger their negativity, switch to lighter topics such as new songs, movies or hobbies, anything that they may feel more positive about. Remember, be mindful of how much time you spend with them. Their negativity will have an effect on your own well-being. And, unfortunately, that's the truth. Limit the frequency, duration of phone calls or conversations as much as you can. Even if they are your own family, you need to stay positive in life to live a happy life. Set a limit to how long your interaction with them will be and don't go over that time. Also, it is important to remember that negative people usually are that way because they feel they lack warmth and love. Often, they protect themselves from the world with their negativity. If you want to help them, think about what's bothering them and decide if there is anything you can do. Be sincere and show them the upsides in life. Over time, small steps toward positive outlook on life may help them overcome their negativity. However, if everything fails and if nothing you do works, you need to take care of yourself and stop trying. Don't consider it a failure. Consider it the time when you learned your own strength and had an insight into how easy it is to spoil our own happiness. Indeed, life is too precious to be wasted on negativity. You need to focus on your own happiness and finding new ways to improve your and your family's life. Stay strong, Andrew. Good luck. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. And now it's time for the next step in our game. Nine pennies can change your life. In the third step of our game, you need to put one investment penny in your Better Life account. That is the nice box, container, which you keep in a safe, pleasant place in your home, work or school. In other words, put one IP in your BLA. Please go back to the description of the game on my blog on my official site www.johannakern.com if you don't know what we are talking about. With this investment penny, you are buying thoughts, allowing you to understand how important it is to let go of your load. The old luggage that weighs you down can manifest itself through your attachment to control. We all tend to believe we know what's best for us, either because of the way we were brought up, patterned by opinions and rules of our family or society, or simply because we fear that if we don't control everything, it won't be good for us. To complete the third step, you need to open up to the unknown and be ready for the adventure. Remember that you can't lose at this game. If you get stuck at step three and are not able to continue, you still gain experience. Nothing or no one can stop you from starting the game all over again from step one, knowing how to play it better this time. Reference for the third step. The younger brother in our story walked away from his comfort zone. He left behind the plain, 
and his brother, although it was the hardest thing to do. His reason was telling him that he would not survive out there alone. Yet he chose to be open to new possibilities and started his new adventure, although he could not control the way things could evolve. Your time limit for the third step is one week till our next show. Let go of all that weighs you down, including your comfort zone, and have fun with it. If you don't remember the story in the game or how to do the third step, you can simply go to my official website and find the Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life game on my blog. We are adding there the next steps in the game after each show. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. And now it is time for our usual short relaxation, in which you will be guided to repeat some affirmations that can help you to reprogram your subconscious and deal with your subconscious fears. The affirmations come from my book 365 plus 1 Affirmations to Create a Great Life. The book contains a step-by-step -step program which I designed based on many years of experience in counseling people to help them achieve what they wanted the most. If you are ready, I'd like you to listen to the following. Find a comfortable position, sitting or lying down. Close your eyes and let your arms rest alongside your body. Good. Now take a deep breath and slowly let it out. Take another deep breath and again slowly let it out. Then, while taking in the next breath, let it fill you up from toes to head and add an image to it, a pleasant dim light glowing everywhere inside you. Keep breathing and observing the light inside from the count of ten to one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax and let the dim light inside shine in every single cell in your body. Good. In order to reprogram your subconscious for the life you want, you need to learn how to replace your negative thinking with positive thoughts. Your life is not your enemy. Your life is your loyal friend. Acknowledge it. Appreciate it. You are worth living the most wonderful life. Repeat after me in your mind. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me if I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being. 
one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Well done. Remember, the life you want on the subconscious level is already yours. And now you will learn how to access it so that you can start living it in your day-to-day -day reality. You have learned a lot from your past and now you can be free from it. Any hardship you have experienced has only made you stronger, wiser and more compassionate. Repeat in your mind, I will treasure what I have learned through suffering and struggling as a good lesson about who I am. I know that I am powerful. I know that I can trust and respect myself. I completely release my past and live in the now. Well done. You can move forward now in your life. The life you want can be yours. Make it your reality. Enjoy it and love it. You are a powerful creator and you will get what you want and live the life you want. Now you can open your eyes at the count of one to five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Excellent. You've done very well. You are fully relaxed, yet energized and happy to continue with your day. Thank you for participating. As usual, I wish you the most wonderful week until we meet again. Take care. See you next week. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern.